Hi, today I am so excited to be able to share with you three new Dollar Tree Christmas DIYs. All three of these are so fast and easy to make and I also think that they would be fabulous gifts for friends and family. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Jennifer and this is a little bit of calm and crazy. I'm excited because today I am collabing with Heidi from Happily Thriving Heidi. She is like a little energizer bunny and I would like to take some of that energy, but she does like room makeovers, DIYs, and of course she is sharing with you today some Christmas DIY, so make sure you head over to her channel and check those out. I will leave her channel as well as her video linked below in the description box. If you are coming over from Heidi's channel, welcome. I am so glad that you are here. I hope that you enjoy what you find and you will hit that subscribe button and stick around and become a part of my DIY family. And let's go ahead and get right on into today's project. To start off with, I am using three of these wooden plaques from Dollar Tree. I begin by removing the outside plastic and the little black knobs using a Phillips screwdriver. Once I have done that, I'm going in with Waverly's chalk paint in crimson. This is one of my absolute favorite reds, especially for Christmas time. I give it a good three coats. I make sure that I put on the first coat, completely let it dry, and then I go in with the second coat and do the same thing with the third coat. Now, even after the three coats are done, you can still see a little bit of that black center and I'm okay with that, but if that bothers you, you might wanna go ahead and go in with a fourth coat. As you can see, I also painted all of the edges. I did not paint the back. I left that the way it is because that will be against the wall. I also made sure that I left the hanger and the twine because I don't know exactly how these are gonna be hung up. But of course, once you know how you would hang them up, then you can decide what or how you want to do the back of your own little signs. So the, here they are after the three coats of paint, and now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do a little stenciling. If you were not able to get these stencils from Dollar Tree, they did come in packs of two, so I had the Let It Snow one, as well as the Santa Please Stop here. You could also go in with like the window cleans and some Mod Podge. You could print some of your own things off the computer and create your own stencils. There are so many different options that you could do. You could also put some words on these. You could just be as creative as your imagination will let you. So on the very first one, I'm going in with Santa and the Ho Ho Ho. And I'm just gonna stick with black and white paint. So I'm using Waverly's chalk paint and white and then Waverly's chalk paint and ink for the black. So I taped off around the Santa so that I would not accidentally get paint where I did not want it to go. And then I'm going in with my stencil brush. This is one from Waverly. I picked it up at Walmart. This is my favorite brush. It's kind of like a little bit of an oval shape and it works really well. And I'm using the same brush here on my snowman going in with that same white paint. Now, what I love about this brush is it's dense enough. It has an oval shape. When you stencil, you want to unload some of your paint. You don't want it to be too wet. If it's too wet, you will find that your paint will like seep underneath your stencil and you will have a messy stencil in the end. So you have to offload some of that paint and you see I have a piece of paper that I do that on. And then you just pounce straight down and you see that I'm doing that right here with that ho, ho, ho. Now the paint brush that I'm using here is actually one that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I don't like it as much, but it is small. I actually wanna get a little bit of a better, smaller one, but it's getting the job done. You just have to take your time and be patient. It's not quite as dense of a paintbrush, so it just takes a little bit more time. Um, once I have everything painted the way that I want to on the Santa, I remove everything. Now with the snowman, I'm moving stickers around so that I can go in and use the black on his little twig arms. I decided to just stick with the black instead of trying to do like brown and black. That was just too many colors. So that was, again, a personal preference. And then I did the same thing with his hat. Now, one thing I probably would have changed, I'll be honest, is I kind of wish I would have adjusted the stencil slightly and brought his hat down just a little bit, but I didn't. But if you're doing this, you might wanna consider doing something like that. That's the only afterthought that I had. For the very last plaque, I'm going in with the little deer, and again, I'm taping off the areas that I don't want to accidentally get paint on, and going in with that exact same white chalk paint and that Waverly brush. Now, this Waverly brush does come in a pack of two if you're looking for it. Now, I did have to make sure that my stencil had time to dry before I went in with 
the second deer and this time I just flipped my stencil over and placed it down trying to eyeball where to place it so that my deers would be kind of even and on the exact same angle again it was an eyeball we're going to consider them sisters not twins in this kind of a situation it's not perfect it doesn't have to be but you know it turned out pretty okay so the final little detail that I wanted to add to each one of these plaques is I'm going in with my white paint pen and I'm just outlining each plaque. Now my paint pen was having a little bit of difficulty in the beginning and again, this is not perfect, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be. And I just kind of just kept playing with it until I got it the way that I wanted it, working with the curves. And as you can see, I don't necessarily go straight around. I'll kind of work with a curve and then I might do a straight line. Everyone has their different way of doing things, and this is just the way that it worked for me. Um, I think that adding that white line around it made all of the difference. It definitely brought out those images better. It really just kind of sealed the deal. Once I gave that time to dry, I did go ahead and go in with Rust-Oleum's chalk paint in the clear matte. This is a protective top coat, and I gave them a good spray and let that dry so they would be nice and protected. After that, they were just ready for me to go ahead and reattach their knobs right back on. I went ahead and left them the black because that was perfect to go along with how I painted them. And I think that these look so adorable. Of course, I'm using them for stocking hangers, but you could use them for other things. I think they'd be really cute to have them hanging near the front door with maybe like a little basket to collect mail, maybe even your keys. There are so many options. You could even just hang other little audit items on them even have them in kids rooms i would love to hear how you would use these let me know that in the comments below for my next project i am using these little wooden houses of course that came from the dollar tree now i know that these are so hard to come by and i understand i am lucky enough that courtney from creative on the cheap was kind enough to send me these three because guess what i never actually found them in store myself either but if you can't find them, Yemi from the Latina Next Door has actually done a whole video on how you can make your own. And I'm going to link that for you down in the description box so you can check that out if you want to create your own little houses because they are just so adorable. So this project is just so easy. So I picked up some scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. I love to get it there because I can get it for, for a dollar. So I've just picked up three sheets that I think coordinate super well, and then I trimmed them out so that they would fit inside the houses. I did this by measuring the width of each house and then trimming a sheet so that it would match that width of the house after I decided what sheet I wanted to go with each house, of course. <laughs> and then once I had every sheet of paper cut to the width, I then went in with my finger and I laid it out and I created like an impression using that bottom of the roof line. And then I trimmed that out with scissors and that's how I created the piece that would go inside the house. After that, if I had any tweaks off of the length of the house, I would go ahead and make those. And honestly, I found that this worked super well. I only had one tiny hiccup and that was with my tall skinny house. That one, I, the roof line, I didn't get quite right and it showed a tiny bit of the underneath part. So to fix that, I just went in with some black acrylic paint and I just painted out that entire back so that it would blend in with the paper and that took care of that for me i think that the end outcome is just fine now i decide not to glue these in mod podge these in and nothing i just stuck them in and that was it so that i could change these out later so for the red and cream colored paper all i'm doing is taking the little metal joy word that comes in the pack of three using a little hot glue and attaching that so simple and then on the tall little house i wanted to create a little bell garland with these tiny little silver and red bells so i just took some twine and then tied a little loop knot on each one of those at different lengths i wanted it to not be all the same height or length and then i put those on to a piece of twine and hot glued the twine onto the house I think that this looks so cute. It's super simple. And of course, I can change it out so easily. 
So were you one of the lucky ones able to find these houses or were you one of those still on the hunt trying to find it? Don't forget, just go check out the link below if you are curious about building your own. I will have that link because I do think these are so cute and versatile for the whole year. For my last project, I am changing up these three wooden ornaments. Now, I think they are super cute the way that they are, but I wanted to show you how easy it is to change them up to match your decor even better. I'm going in with some more Hobby Lobby scrapbook paper, two of which I used in the houses that I did in the previous project. And then the third paper is one that I have used on a previous project in another video. To start off with, I am taking a putty knife to remove the top of the ornament. Now, every ornament's different with how easily or how difficult it is to take it off, but they do come off and they will stay intact and I will be putting those back on. After that, I do go in and I start pulling the burlap away. Also, again, using the putty knife to help me I, sometimes they stick a little bit more and sometimes again, they pull off super fast. From ornament to ornament, it changes. So you never know, but just take a little time and patience and it will come off. After that, I go in and I sand with a 60 grit sandpaper, just trying to get a little bit of the adhesive off that was left behind and trying to make it a little bit smoother. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're not trying to get the paint off at this point. You just want to make them a little bit more smooth. From there, I went ahead and I am using my Waverly's chalk paint in ink. It's just their black paint and I am painting the sides as well as the ba back of the ornament. Now after I do this I will go back in with the paper but I wanted to paint them first. I'm one of those that likes the front and the back of my projects to look good and especially if you're thinking about ornaments you see the different angles on a tree and so I wanted to go ahead and have my back of my ornament still coordinate with my front of my ornament. I hope I'm making sense. It only took one coat and once everything was dried and then I could go in with my paper and some Mod Podge and go ahead and start working on the front of my ornaments. So to speed up my process, I go ahead and I lay out a thin coat of Mod Podge on all three of my ornaments so that they are ready to go. And then I can go in with my paper. I line it up where I want it and then I just smooth it out making sure that I have no bubbles and I cut off a little bit of the excess just so that I don't have it in the way. I do that with all three sheets. I don't trim too close. I will do that and take care of that once it dries. If you've been around, you know how I do that. I like to go in with some sandpaper and get a cleaner edge. That is my favorite way to take care of it. So once my Pod Podge is completely set up, it's dried, I go in with a 60 grit sandpaper and I sand away from my side to side and away from my scrapbook paper. And that is my favorite way to get paper off. It gives a very clean cut. It's like the paper was meant to be on whatever it is that you're working with. So it just always looks so good. Somehow I don't have the footage of me painting the top part of the ornament in that black chalk paint, but I went ahead and I did that on two of the ornaments. I will actually go and end up doing that on this third one as well, but I went ahead on a, this is actually a Dollar Tree brush and it's the one inch. They're not very um, stiff and they're not very dense. So this is really good for dry brushing. And I'm just going around the edges of each of the ornaments just to add a little bit of dimension to them. Again, this is one of those personal prefer preferences. None of this stuff is ever necessary. You can always customize these to whatever it is that is your personal preference. To protect my ornaments, I decided to go ahead and add Mod Podge on top so that these will last more than just this year. Now, I never add Mod Podge on top until the Mod Podge that is underneath the paper is completely dry. And this is so that I can prevent any bubbling and warping from happening. So once I've added the Mod Podge on top to protect all three of these. I let that set aside and dry. And once it's completely dry, then I go in with some hot glue to reattach the little silver tops that originally came on these ornaments. I also had another package of the metal words, and so I decided to use the word joy, but this time I'm actually going in with some E6000. Again, I wanted this to stay on here and not go anywhere, and E6000 is a long-term hold. So I'm applying E6000 on the back. I do give it about 
two minutes to sit there before I even place it onto my ornament so it can get nice and tacky. So to give you a little bit of reference, if you've ever used like fake eyelashes and you have to go in with your eyelash glue and give it time to dry or get tacky before you apply your eyelashes, the same concept applies with this. So once it has set up a couple of minutes, then you can place it on your ornament. And this bad boy is going nowhere. After that, I go ahead and I add some black ribbon to the top of my ornaments. I got this from Surebonder when they sent me that mystery box so I could do the little mystery box challenge. And my ornaments are all set and ready to go and be hung on my Christmas tree at Christmas time. I am so excited. I love how these turned out and they were so simple and easy to do. What is fun about a project like this is that you can make as many or as few as you want. These would also look so cute used as like a tag on top of a Christmas gift. I just absolutely love them. I had so much fun creating all three of these DIYs to share with you today, but as always, I want to know if you happen to have a favorite, which one is it? Let me know that in the description box below. Don't forget to go check out Heidi's video and see what she has created for you as well. Leave her a little snowman emoji in her comments so that she knows that I sent you. I will leave her channel as well as her video linked in the description box below for you. Also, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a big thumbs up. That really helps me out and it lets me know that you are enjoying my content. Also, if you haven't hit that subscribe button already, I hope that you will so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I hope that you are having a fantastic week or weekend and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.